Hello, good evening, and welcome back, everyone, to the Overwatch All-Star Brawl, presented by Star Esports, which is a double elimination tournament dedicated to the Overwatch Tier 3 community. And we are powered by OmniCoach. Visit OmniCoach.gg and use the promo code STAR ESPORTS for 10% off your first video package order. Today, back for the 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time game, we have a lovely matchup for you tonight. We've got Title Esports Lullaby going up against SK esports in the second round of the lower bracket i'm 3.007 and today i'm joined by once again the lovely sir waltham thank you very much three foot excited to see this match we just came off the back of what i would call a between metamorphic and aptics esports and you know i want to see that ferocity come out between these two teams tonight yeah, that would be pretty freaking crazy if we would see as excellent a matchup as we just did previously. Not to make it, you know, not to set the bar too high for Lullaby or SKE Esports, but <laughs> I, it's a tough act to follow. Uh, an hour, 45 minute Overwatch. Literally a brawl. It was freaking insane. And I freaking love it. And I can't wait to see what these uh, teams are going to bust out for us. It's been uh, n never since I got to cast for them. So I'm <laughs> frankly looking forward to seeing what they bring out and what better map to start on than Lijiang Tower. Yeah, Lijiang Tower seems to be one of those staple maps that you always gotta, you're always going to kind of see here at the All-Star Brawl, no getting around it. It's uh, it's perhaps the most common. I don't think I've gone a out seeing it. Uh, so we should be expected to get into it here relatively quickly. Three, do you have any predictions as to how, what we're gonna be seeing pan out for this match? I think that based on how the trend has been going this lovely evening, I believe we're going to, if we get to the command center, it's going to be some May action and well-deserved May action at that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've, we've already seen good May play and I'm definitely not against seeing a little bit more, uh, the ability to choke off points. It's so, it's such a unique dynamic to me that uh, I, I just, I just love seeing it. And what about the scores? How do you think how do you think these teams are gonna are gonna score up against each other? Hmm. Well, we're gonna start out with at least one point being earned, the glory of a control point map being that you literally have no choice but to have someone take it away. It's gonna be interesting to see if they get if they can get the 2-0 situation, is one team gonna run away with it? Are they gonna sprint for that 3-0? And then maybe instead, though, it gets turned around into a reverse sweep. I don't know. The momentum of Li Zhang Tower is such that depending on how many different compositions we get to see, I think that'll be a relatively decent indicator of whether we're going to be in for a basically a pretty even slugfest or if we're going to have a little bit of a sea biscuit here yeah yeah it, it's uh it, it can kind of incline itself to the rest of the match is going to go never too uh too opposed to get that uh to get that kind of a preface going it looks like we're going to be hopping into it in here in just a minute we are waiting for the teams to ready up if i am not mistaken now we are just going to be waiting on that and then we will be seeing our first map three based off of what we saw last game we did see quite a bit of fara are, are you excited for the fara this time and do you think it's going to come out if we go to gardens so interesting since we have no information on these teams previous performances. I say we, but it's really just the royal we. It's actually really just me, Threepwood. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm royalty, apparently, and that's kind of pretentious of him. He's kind of a jerk. So, uh, so yeah, so there we go. It's... If it's... So, all right, here we go. If both teams bring out the pharmacy, it's going to be a pretty protracted dogfight, and I think if the Sombra is there on either side, that's going to determine the victor. If one team brings out the Farah, but the other brings out the pharmacy, I think that's a wash, or rather, it's a lockup. Whoever has the pharmacy is just going to win hands down, and the other team is going to have to scramble. Yeah, kind of a bunch of different dynamics we could go there. Not quite the concern at the moment. Uh, I know I kind of led you into that, but dead on Night Market here. Yeah, Night Market is interesting. I'm not really sure how that's going to fly. So you sometimes see the Farah. You sometimes do, but it's it's going to be in a situation where the team is really really good at the Farah play and they really really like having it in their maps whenever they get the opportunity and while this map skybox is spy skybox isn't really anything to shake a stick at the fact of the point being so enclosed as it is lends itself to a little difficulty that being said both teams avoiding the debate as i am well who knows <laughs> yeah not much to say quite yet with these positions 
I would love to see the Torb come out, but we have about 10 seconds before Paduk might change their mind. I I don't remember the last time I've seen a Torb on this section of Li Xiong. And for the time being, it looks like they're going to roll out with it. Ah, oh, Paduk, my fan, my buddy, I love you. This is going to be great. Okay, so here we go. It's going to be Red Sledge coming out with the Winston. Class Nation also on the Diva. Early hook comes in. He's going to grab one of them, but the Diva's there with the Defense Matrix to make it happen. Love sitting also on that Widowmaker. Very scrappy little composition coming out from Lullaby. And I'm loving it so far. And it looks like Paduk is too, but Madshu actually grabs the kill onto Love. So that's a little less Love on the map. And the D-Mech gets onto Class Nation. Foggy Bear not going to have his life, let alone his invulnerability matrix. Class Station gets finished off there. And the take from SK Esports actually gets shut down, though Kala uh, looks like they're going to have a little bit of a say to that. Yeah, I got to admit, I, I know that it's not perhaps the most predominant composition running out here, but I really like seeing the Tracer back in action as kind of a main of of it. Well, it was a dive comp back when Red Sledge was <laughs> playing on the Winston, but just switching on to that Arista going to change things up now. And for the better, it seems, they're going to have taken it. But like I was saying, I like seeing the Tracer come out. In the end, they're not going to stick with it. They're going to go for that pulled pork. And it's looking like unless Class Nation swaps, we're going to be seeing the triple tank come out. And in fact, a pause is going to be called from the side of Lullaby. Yep, uh, possibly it's going to be one of those classic NA production technical difficulties, which at this point, none of us are strangers to. We've all had an ISP go out on us at some point in time, such right. as the dangers of, uh, you know, online gaming. And yeah, it looks like it's going to be love for whatever reason, game crash, internet canceling out on them, whatever, they have disappeared. Um, and so... Uh, we're just going to be sitting here musing about how amazing it is that Paduk not only is sticking out on this Torbjorn, but they actually have quite an old charge coming in. Yeah, that's going to make playing against the uh, Molten Core, the Hot Nacho Cheese, kind of an interesting uh, interesting al avenue for the side of the uh, SK Esports. They're, they don't have a whole lot of old charge because they did have to swap quite a few members. We're going to be seeing Madshu and Lucmino with their ults online. The EMP, very powerful, um, especially against a comp that's as heavily reliant on its abilities, such as the pulled pork combo. Uh, and Paduk, you know, if the EMP hits the turret, that's one less avenue of damage that the Torbjorn has. So the EMP is going to pretty much make or break this next push if they, if they decide to initiate early with it. Yeah, they've got a pretty major option to play here, which is, or that is to say, Lullaby pretty much has one thing going for them right now. Uh, sorry, did I say one thing? I meant three things. Karn has the Hog ult ready to go. Foggy Bear also has a Batiste amplification field ready to rock, and that might be a combo that, while maybe it's not necessarily the one you're thinking of, this could be a big opportunity for Lullaby to turn this around. Yeah, Love, however, going to be resetting that ult charge to zero as we see them kind of in the hero selection phase. Uh, perhaps taking a little bit long to get reassembled with their team at the moment. Uh, looking ah. like it's actually going to be Love splitting again, whatever issues were relevant or what were present still not quite hammered out. Yeah, but that's yeah. a nasty shame. We are seeing quite a bit of ults. You were absolutely right about that. Uh, from title esports, TE Lullaby, Coming online, we're going to be seeing almost five, probably five by the end of this fight, uh, or by the mid-fight, honestly, uh, if they don't activate any early on, which, except for maybe May, I, maybe Baptiste. Maybe ba it's, it's hard to anticipate any of these use, being used as a hard initiation tool. Yeah, it, uh, it's interesting. You, depending on who you have ready at the field to go, the Baptiste ultimate is... And damage amplification. So hit scan, you're going to want to be up close, personal, ready to rock and roll, aka Baptiste and Hog. Uh, Hero, though, they can kind of hit that from a bit of a ways. Uh, Arisa's damage being projectile and is going to be starting out here. Madshu, yeah, they're in hack position. It's going to be looking for that option ready to go. Maywall stops the big pulled pork play from going in. Madshu gets found out. I don't, yep, they do drop the EMP. They actually grab four. So this fight is definitely going to be over. Love had dropped onto the Hanzo to build up some ult charge very quickly, and they die relatively quickly. Foggy Bear also now going to try and get the enemy team to kill them. Yeah, Voggy gonna be stalled out just a little bit, <laughs> getting taunted a little bit by Mad Shoe. He's gonna be saying the quick hello, but now the ult's in favor 
of the of the what I would call the attacking side. It's gonna be basically three to four, but an early hook on wow. to Class Nation. That is impressive. Yeah, that's huge. And so they do get how do you say it? they force out the big boom. But the big boom don't get no big kills. Hero has to drop the bongos for I'm not sure why. Uh, it turns out that Red Sledge had their own bongos ready to go. But they actually go down very quickly thanks to that Baptiste ultimate. I had a feeling we were gonna see that, and it came out big vaporizing the Arisa shield and the Arisa behind it. Now that's a combo that I super like. It takes a bit to set up, but that was some serious damage. Yeah, it really was. You do not want to mess with that combo. And right now the awareness of Khan and Hero just find out wherever Class Nation is and sniff out that D.Va, get the hooks in that D.Va's haunches as much as possible. Just supreme there. Gonna be a lot of ults coming online for both sides, however. Both gonna be working with about half their banks online. Yeah, so well played. Uh, the retake is there, and even the ultimates are also ready, but they let SK Esports pretty much just waltz right onto the point. Get that Arisa going. Molten Core is here and ready to play, but the barriers is also gonna be- Oh, but Red Sledge gets caught in it, uh, thanks to the May freezing them, so they go down. d is- Wow, Paduck! Look at this! That's apparently why you keep the Torbjorn around. Good mercy. Yeah, absolutely. It is looking- pretty brutal here and this is looking a little bit reminiscent of the uh clockwork comp i'm seeing the torb i'm seeing the may the hog ori you know you, you, those those heavy control style characters can be so powerful and it makes sense why we're seeing them on Li Zhang, because that's kind of where this comp shines the most it just happens to be on command center yeah speaking of a holy moly uh that was a bit of a Sombra hack there. Oh, goodness, but unfortunate. Yeah, there it is. The retake is there, and in the 96%, uh, Lullaby needs to get on this point. Stat, or it's not going to happen. Now, we're going to be seeing Paduk kind of run it in there. Guns blazing in some literal senses of the word. Just trying to put down some damage. Let's see how this damage amp matrix works out. It seems to be going pretty well. Oh, they step away from the point just a little too long. Who knows how that fight would have gone because uh, we're stuck here with um with a take from SK Esports. Well played to them, and they're going into a quote unquote round point now with uh, Li Zhang Tower going into the command center phase. So potentially we're not even going to see the garden. No Farah. Yeah. This is a little bit more ideal of what you'd want if you're running this. Uh, May Torb style composition though. You have a lot of choking potential here. This this map is very much so a choking hazard. You, you can run, you know, you can run command of so many different angles based on where you're set up with the Torb, based on how the May, you know, uses her walls, based on the Ori grabs. The hog threat of the hook alone is enough to also restrict a lot of movement. And they're going to be going up against a 3 3 3 3. Maybe not the most proficient at taking down this comp. Creep says 3-3 three, three is uh, pretty deadly, especially if you're going to be running up to a Seziun May. The, they're still on the field, but they don't have the Reinhardt, the Zarya, or anything else to happen. Huge anti nade goes into the back line. Thank goodness for Baptiste's invulnerability matrix, which lets the kills come in for Lullaby. Oh my uh, God. Let's the kills come in huge for Lullaby. Yeah, and Foggy Bear already has ult. This player is just <laughs> looking ridiculous right now. That immortality field coming out big and because of that keeping everybody up able to get that healing in and because of that the amplification matrix in for this next fight red sledge and class nation are the only ones anywhere near close with the diva bomb and earth shatter but it still might not be enough because you can just pokes from so far with foggy bear's amp matrix yeah this is kind of crazy i this is a bunker that I don't you don't usually see. Love is even going to be sitting there on the McCree. The hooked ah oh, the Reinhardt shield was there, meaning pull pork is going to have significantly less efficacy than it normally would. But that does mean that damage is just still coming in. Yes, and that Baptiste uh, field means you're not even going to get to play on the point. The wall comes in. It doesn't manage to block quite everything off, but it does put the team up enough. However, the shatter goes in on the back line. Card goes down. Uh, High noon goes out. Kala actually falls. Unbelievable. Karen goes down. Two class nations. Uh, amazing tenacity the bomb goes in it grabs a bunch of uh, builds uh, the molten core is down on the field I don't think it's gonna get any kills this time around yeah but we do have the Ori grab from TE lullaby to try to manage the field a little bit in the end not really gonna pull into Paduk's threatened zone with the molten core too much 
a lot of stall coming in. It's still going to be looking at about 62, 63% for the side of TE Lullaby. They're in a pretty favorable spot, at least so far. Foggy Bear, so you're going to have to rebuild that amp, though. Yeah, as far as spicy stalls go, that was pretty awesome. I would rate it definitely at like a several hundred thousand Scovilles. But busting through this 3-3 defense, especially with Rally on the field and a nano boost coming online, is not going to be easy. Kala's Grav also doing a wonderful job of developing. So it's going to be interesting to see how TE Lullaby does bust through here. Oh, it's by killing Red Sledge. With a Reinhardt down, that's going to be pretty much a one-way ticket to the point. Yeah, and the Zeri Grav coming in here might up a little bit, but the May Blizzard are gonna come seal the deal just a little bit. Give him a little bit of time. Lum, Lum, what on earth was that? You get the boosty, oh, 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 and go absolutely ham. Three kills. SK Esports is holding this like it's, well, Lum, on the back of Lum, Lucio lifts, apparently. Yeah, oh, but Lum gonna be taken uh... down rather early, not gonna let that happen. Yeah, I think they detected that there was a bit of a barriers on the way, and that may have been exactly the case, though he's definitely not going to be busting it out this fight. If they manage to get that retake going, Maywall goes for the whole uh, separation. The Molten Core is there, but it's actually not getting a lot out there. But the, oh, D.Va goes for the bomb, and Class Nation gets popped out by the turret, which is popping off. Hero goes down, though. That's not good times. And with an Amplification Matrix popped out just a little too oh, late. No. Yeah. Kala getting frozen in the middle of the nano... Not something you want to do, especially if you're trying to get that Zarya as much charge as possible. But they're still going to maintain the hold, and that's a very good position. We're looking at Ult Economy right now. The Zarya grab, the Reinhardt Earth Shatter. This comp that the TE Lullaby is running, they're going to have a little bit of a tough time pushing in. But Duke, not the most aggressive uh, character to play. Yeah, it's going to be rough. If uh, if Lullaby is even going to be able to make it to the point, it'll be a miracle. And with the kills coming in with that very early stalling grab, Love grabs a couple off the high noon, but this map is done with. SK Esports takes that from their first capture straight to 100 after a decent hold from Lullaby, but just not good enough. Yeah, Lullaby's comp just... not... Uh, not quite looking like it had the push it had it had the hold very well uh -huh. but just not quite the push again the torb is a tough character to recover with but he's great if you're already in control yeah and while their skill cannot be contested their loss of li Zhang is also equally uncontestable so they're gonna have the chance to pick a map as we go into the map selection phase but not before SK Esports gets to ban a map from the map pool. And this is the part where you, know, you get some mind games, but this is also the chance for TE Lullaby to start to, you know, make a bit of a stand. Yeah, TE Lullaby gonna have their their way with the maps, basically. They're gonna be able to say, hey, we play best on this, or, you know, if they've been doing their research, hey, our opponent SK Esports plays worse on, worst on this. So let's go with this map or this map. The one thing they won't be able to do is they won't be able to pick another control map. So that means Ilios and Oasis are going to be taking a quick breather while we go to perhaps an assault uh, payload hybrid map. One of the three. Speaking of take a breather, so we saw some solid Orisa Hog play come out from SK Esports until they did switch it up. So I wonder if T. So we, you know, we got our first uh, run here. We got the maps come out. We saw the comps coming in. T. Lullaby. I don't want to say necessarily went with a meme comp. But especially with Rollock on the horizon with the 222 being forced, uh, you can pretty safely say that it is in fact a meme composition. So we have yet to see anything, I guess, traditional. I wonder if this is the opportunity where they pick a map and say, okay, now we're going to bring out maybe something that we've tried and true. Yeah, that, that absolutely may be the case. Uh, I mean, I don't want to speak too much for TE Lullaby because obviously I don't, I, I'm not in their team. But, you know, that comp that they just ran is rather strong, most notably on that command center. So maybe they just thought they could pull something out that's a little bit niche, that they've practiced a little bit. That may not have been their strongest comp. There's there's by all chances um, the possibility that, you know, maybe that's what they've been putting their bread and butter into. But again, it's just one of those, hey, this is a map that this sometimes works with. Nobody's trained against this most likely so let's just throw it out there see how we go let's, let's go fish and see what we catch basically yeah and they definitely did catch a bit paduk there with some really clutch torbjorn ultimates and especially halts pulling uh 
<laughs> esports, SK esports into the nonsense, into the the cheese as Waltham calls it, was pretty pretty good solid play. But ultimately, no pun intended, it just did not happen, and the they they did not take a round of that map. So. Uh, the ban, of course, comes in onto Horizon Lunar Colony. Everyone saw that coming. What no one saw coming, in my opinion, is TE Lullaby. Uh, we're heading to Anubis. Ooh, and I'm hoping that TE that me I am hoping that that means that TE Lullaby is uh, feeling a little bit of the sniper game right now because yeah. usually Anubis, that first point can be very sniper friendly. Ash Widow, it's uh -huh. uh, there's some potential there, but at the same time. Also inclines me to think that uh, Orissa first point's a little bit likely that Orissa likes to set up on that mid ground, just kind of hold that point. Uh, the fortify preventing knock offs from a fire concussion blast, anything along those lines as well. Yeah, the fire concussion blast, as we have been educated earlier today, <laughs> is quite capable of dislodging some high ground bunkers. Now, that being said, SK Esports, I think they are going to be, I, I would assume that they're definitely going to be running some of that hardcore Orisa. Uh, hog that pulled pork composition uh it, it seemed to work so well for them on a map that doesn't necessarily favor it now we're heading to a place that for the first point very explicitly favors it so uh should that should be a no-brainer now for lullaby if they're looking for that dps this could be a breakthrough map for them yeah i mean i i wouldn't say that the other maps have been as uh, dps heavy uh, it will be SK Esports choosing to go on the defensive to start. So for those of you at home, TE Lullaby going to be on the right in red. SK Esports on the left in blue. We're about to hop into it here in just a few moments. But Threep, aside from the fact that we just predicted perhaps a little bit of sniper action, what else do you think we're going to see? I think we're going to see some... Uh, some a little bit of that new chaos onto the point B. Should anyone get past point A, we are going to get to see that lovely little patch come into play where your respawn is drastically cut and the snowball potential is drastically reduced. But speaking of that snowball potential, there's one thing that you can stop and that would be a fully ulted up and ready to go uh, Sombra. So yes, snowball potential is slightly reduced. Six man EMP doesn't really care. You know, so <laughs> that could be that could be the situation there where, OK, cool, you're all here and ready to get EMP'd. It's an interesting it's an interesting problem. And Anubis is definitely a map where you can run that Sombra to great effect. It's and you know, if you have to use the EMP to dislodge the bunker, then so be it. But there's lots of ways to go about that. And you could be uh, on the defense. You could be in a sticky situation. Yeah, and kind of as we predicted a little bit earlier for the defense, we're going to be seeing some snipers, not the Widowmaker like we had predicted. Kala going to be on that Ash, not a bad call. Uh, I'd say Ash is one of the uh, the spam snipers. She can just throw down a lot of damage, build up her ult real quick, and her ult has uh, much more utility than Widow's, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. As far as the pick goes, that's an easy one, especially with Lum having the option on the Mercy to pocket the Kala, meaning that not only Tracer, but also 200 HP heroes are within a one headshot territory. Speaking of which, everyone, if you're liking what you're seeing and if you love the content, be sure to give us a follow, preferably even a subscribe if you're super loving it, and we'll be sure to bring this uh, awesome Overwatch tournament as much as we can for you. But meanwhile, we're going to get started on the attack here with TE Lullaby bringing out yes indeed a pulled pork of their own hero going very low though early on yeah pulled pork is notable but not as notable as paduk running out on this tour once again this is a bold move uh -huh, uh -huh. and it's gonna start working out really well for te lullaby uh karn grabs machu very quickly thanks to the pulled pork combo but red sledge gets arguably the better kill onto hero and that's, you know, a pulled pork kill is not resible by any stretch of the imagination unless you're doing... Whoa, look at a flank from Karn! That was crazy awesome! And the Torbjorn turret making it very fun for the defense to set up. I guess fun's not the right word here. Kala does find the turret, but Seizuin actually grabs that one. Lum does get that res out. Ooh. And okay, here comes the defense, and they are angry. Yeah, we saw Lub once the offense had cleared that choke, take that high ground, but is Luke still just going to be on attention for that, getting the right clicks right into that Widow Skull? What, what is this? Wait a minute, wait a minute. The defense was stabilizing, and yet here is T <laughs> Lullaby ripping through it. Paduk almost has the hot molten cheese ready to go. Karn almost has that hog ult to go with Fogey Bear's amplification. 
this is this is crazy, but Luke all right, so Luke has the trans, and of course every member's now on the field thanks to that respawn, and Kala is getting very close to a bob, which is very Oh no. Is. Okay, hero goes down, so this push is functionally over. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of momentum kind of lost. Mad Shu getting a lot more value than perhaps they anticipated they would get with those drunk rat mines. Uh but there's yeah. Interesting investment of the blizzard here. Maybe uh, maybe just throwing it out. They might be expecting a change up on the May. That could have uh, been a typo too. That's I think yeah. I think that might be a super rough situation. Um, or a big or like the biggest brain play I can possibly think of <laughs> either way. Kala has built up to the bob and this is gonna be a very interesting hold now. Both teams have a truckload of ultimates to play with. Bob has come out early, right into the amplification matrix. Does Oh Hob Bob no. Oh no, he went down so fast. Oh no! Oh, and this is brilliant. We see Paduk throw that nacho cheese right into the sh area that Orissa was bunkering down behind, meaning it's no longer a safe zone. Not a place to stay safe behind. It's not gonna matter though. Yeah. Still seeing the kills go through from the side of SK Esports. Huge turnaround again, this time from Kala, uh, who, thanks to Luke's uh, Discord orb, me, their uh, coach gun is extremely deadly and again one of those major fight turnarounds we saw it happen just from uh te lullaby sk esports pulls off a similar upset yeah i think it is safe to say now three that it was indeed a may fat finger <laughs> yeah that's a super big shame says you gonna be staying on that hero and they do have quite a lot of time to make a play happen and i don't blame it at all in the slightest love's gonna make it with the start out nice play from class nation covering for the mercy getting the res preventing additional kills love's still gonna be now setting up in a very enviable position with the sights on and they're not gonna be able to get much more from it they are in fact going to have a good time though karn grabs class nation d mech but kala does pick love off and now kills starting to come in huge for te lullaby as the emblem Vacation Matrix is back in form, and the bomb goes out, grabs no one. Yeah, but now we're gonna start seeing progress get made. It's just Lum trying to maintain. Luke, once again, having this transcendence right when it's necessary. Wow. But the nacho, the nacho cheese came in and almost took out, uh, you know, a good section of Bob's health. But the wrecking ball knocking everybody off point. Talk about two hands working against each other. It is, it's uh, a little bit discoordinated from both sides right now. Yeah, the fact of the matter is that the other major MVP of this game right now, speaking of voting in the Twitch stream, uh, Twitch picks below the stream, is Paduk's flipping turret, which grabs many kills. Paduk himself eliminates Madshu's tire before it can make it happen. Red Sledge actually finds the Red Sledge Slinger themselves, but not before Hero grabs them. And now it's trades back and forth because the defensive spawn here is so freaking strong. It really is, but if nothing else, the offense are gailing a lot of ults out of the defense but we've seen two or three immortality fields come out just to give testament to how long this fight is going on and good on the defensive side they do not want to give this up without a fight yeah, no one can blame SK Esports for flinging every hero they have into this. Matchu doesn't even get onto the point thanks to the zoning, neither does Luke. It's just so much crowd control here. Another amplification field goes down on the field, only to murder the stalling members of <laughs> SK Esports who finally get pushed off long enough. Yeah, good grief. That was ridiculous. I think we saw like two or three molten cores, a couple amplification fields, two blizzards. That was... That was nutty in all the right directions as far as i'm considered three. Oh yeah uh first of all like let's not i can't help but keep going back to paduk's torbjorn i uh, uh, sorry attack torb which like again as far as memes go that's probably one of the best ones alongside i and i <laughs> let's be frank here or maybe let's be torbjorn because it really kind of worked out for paduk there like those molten core kills came through huge and paduk my friends i love what you're doing on torb let's talk Meet it. We ca cast her to player. I need to see more hammer kills. I know uh -huh. you're watching. The, I know you're watching the stream on a three-minute delay. So after Anubis, I expect those <laughs> hammer kills to come through, my friend. <laughs> let's 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 shape it up. I expect to see some some mad plays. I know you can do it, my friend. Yeah. But now I I don't want to alarm anyone. Paduk is back on Torbjorn for the defense, and I think <laughs> what scares me the most is that this time, having seen the attack Torb. <laughs> now I'm a little scared. Like this is this is getting a little out of hand. So okay, 
uh, they've abandoned the May wall option for the super high ground bunker, which I, I guess is fair. You only have love on the Widowmaker. There's not an additional sniper here to play with, and there's, of course, no Junkrat, which is a popular pair with the Widow. Sure. But this is going to be interesting from SK Esports. The map has been finished. There's two minutes on the clock. It looks like they're going to be bringing their own double sniper with the pulled pork. This is going to be an interesting bunker bopping attempt with Paduk on that constantly damaging Torbjorn turret. Yeah, we are going to be seeing Kala this time hop up onto the Widow. Not looking for the Ash this time around. Double snipers, actually. I didn't even see, I didn't notice the Hanzo. That's a, that's an interesting twist, I'd say. Yeah, it's good at bopping the shields and is great at hopping those kills off that hog. But otherwise, this is going to be an interesting situation. Yes, the turret for the backside, the defense goes down very quickly. But SK Esports has their work cut out for them pretty, again, they're shaping up. They're settling up in here, rather. They're, both of both teams are out of distance of the hook to really make it happen. Maywall now actually from Sezion is huge, and Love finds the pick on Nakala, winning a Widow duel that is really difficult to follow at this point in time. Again, the Ice Wall keeping the hooks firmly entrenched with uh, TE Lullaby, who find Luke with a lucky, uh, not lucky, I should say, a lovely headshot. And that's going to be a bit of a retreat now. Yeah, I mean, Madshu getting the kill on the Foggy Bear is going to buy a bit of uh, sustain off of the board for the side of Lullaby. But, I mean, Love has been so oppressive at the choke. Anybody walking out of spawn has just been smacked down or at least bruised a little bit to where it's it's just hard to get the regroup and really capitalize upon Foggy Bear's death. Speaking of which, Madshu has actually found their way into the back line. Love was unable to get them out of there. And so they're just gonna have a great time having some fun getting flanked from both Ooh. sides as they are forced to retreat. But Kala switches onto the tracer finds the Widowmaker in that classic duel, that classic matchup. The Immortality Matrix field is out. It gets taken down by Red Sledge, who is now ready to start, hopefully, leading this team onto the point. Yes, they do. It's now Brawl time. Machu finds Foggy Bear. No amplification here. Turret goes down. Paduk has the Nacho Cheese. I think they're going to have to pull it out here to make this happen. Yeah, if they want to hold this point, as opposed to just making it last, they're going to have to... They are, but quick reaction from Class Nation to Matrix as much as possible. Look at that. Discords for days. Kala is just doing a wham blam slamming job on the tracer. That's going to clean point A up with a bunch of time left on the clock. Decent enough time to take point B. But again, the amplification matrix still being there. That's that's amplification field. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, SK Esports here going to be in the same position that we kind of saw from title. Uh, they're going to have the opportunity to say, hey, we can run Snowball just a little bit better. They might actually get a Snowball push considering how many ults are in their pockets right now. They're gonna have to go up against quite a bit and a May to really hamper things in, but uh, it doesn't look like this is gonna be the push for them. Yeah, Love finds Kala with that well-placed tree trunk sized arrow to the head. Uh, there's no mercy to, I guess it was an unresable situation, bit of that flank action going on there. And you know, that's just the way the cookies gotta crumble. So, uh, hmm, actually, yeah. SK Esports going to be holding up here. It looks like they might be starting their play. Yes, the Mercy opens it up. The Bongo Drums is out. I think we'll see the uh, field come out next. But the hack on Takara means that they're not going to be able to combo with it. The Dragons is in, but Red Sledge goes down. This is kind of crazy. Yeah, amazing that we didn't see any loss come through uh, with that Dragon, despite the Immortality field coming down. And it's, you know, I, I is not as in favor for the side of Lullaby as I was expecting at the beginning. Yeah, uh, SK Esports racking up quite the number of kills, but Lullaby's here starting that clap back because, again, people just come back to the field so quickly. No tick yet gained by SK Esports. They're just shy of it, but they keep racking out the kills. Karn finally has their whole hog going. They get hacked so gosh darn quickly, though. Hero is even switching onto the Hammond. This is it. SK Esports pull their first tick in, and T Lullaby might be able to pull out a defense here. Yeah, we are going to be seeing the kills come through, and that is absolutely crucial. You, the more kills you start claiming on defense, the more favorable it starts looking for you to actually reclaim the point and not lose it in its entirety. Uh, and that's just because the spawn advantage for defense is so favorable. Every kill counts, just like your vote counts. Make sure to vote in Twitch chat. Oh, you got to make sure your votes heard for the MVP. And I wonder how many votes Paduk might be getting for the sheer memory excellence. So now look at this. Love's got his dragons. Foggy Bear's definitely going to have the uh, field ready, a field ready in time. Love, of course, has the dragons. I wonder what happens if Paduk sets his turret up right in front of that field for sheer turdy goodness. But Kala, Kala with the EMP. Madshu, uh-oh, Madshu onto a Genji. This could be big. 
Yeah, but there's no Ana here, to, so they're not going to try. And, they're not going to be trying to set up that Nano Blade. They're just looking to perhaps get a little bit of poke in, setting it up for later, and a big Dragon Whoa. Angle. Oh, five man EMP, but loves dragons were so well placed in that teeny tiny hole that that's an EMP that is functionally wasted. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to be sincere. I'm not sure what the purpose or what the what the concept behind Mad Shu on this Genji is. I I mean, he's a little bit better if you're going for flankers at dealing with a hook. He has that deflect. Uh, but otherwise, it's it's questionable to me because yeah, he can deflect turrets, he can deflect Hanzo's arrows, but it just it, it doesn't seem to lock in with the rest of the comp too much considering they're not running dive tanks. Yeah, so now that's actually going to be what they are going to switch to. Luke is going to have that nano up for Madshu's next blade if they can get it out in a minute 26. They are already below the time for TE Lullaby, so that's going to be a little difficult for them if they can finish the map on time great. Otherwise, that's going to be rough times. Lum is going to open with the Valkyrie. Foggy Bear, of course, throws his amp field down, and the kills start coming in majorly. Love actually finding Madshu without the help from Batiste. Yeah, and at this rate, Luke not quite building up the ult charge that he'd need to to get this Genji Blade going right out of the gate. They're losing fights kind of a little slower than you might like to see, but as I say that, some big healing going to be coming in, giving them that nano boost, you know, in, in a fight or two, you know, making it possible to suddenly achieve that. But the thing is, still, when you get the nano blade, what do you do? The Torp can throw Nacho Cheese down at his feet, the May can freeze him, uh, can freeze the Genji, that is. The Roadhog can hook him, displace him. It's There's so many different angles you have to worry about with the, the Genji Blade. Yeah, it's kind of nuts how dominant this Torbjord is making this fight when you don't really have a lot to deal with it. Love grabs Kala, so I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's going to be an EMP for that fight, but we're definitely not going to see it now before overtime. They have no choice. They have to contest. They're going to open with the... Uh, no, Love fires the dragons again, cutting them off from the point entirely. They throw the bongos down, but the hook wasn't able to grab anything. The Maywall is huge. Cla There's no class nation gets out of there alive. The nano blade does go in. It's not going to grab anything. The Chacho Cheese gets it. It takes down Machu just as Sir Waltham predicted. That's going to be it. There's no way you come back from that. T.E. Lullaby takes into this. Yeah, Lullaby, that is the kind of Torb play we were hoping to see on Li Zhang. They're going to be turning it around. Title Esports taking their first point, making it an even one-to-one. -one. And I think we're leaning towards a slobber knocker here now, three. Yeah, this is a little spooky. Um, So it's a one-to-one. -one. It's a one-to-one. -one. So T.E. Lullaby takes, uh, takes the Anubis pickup. This might be a situation where whoever picks the map wins. Now, Li Zhang Tower worked out really well for SKE Esports. They were dominant, and it was crazy. Now, Title Esports Lullaby just showed us that not only is Anubis a viable map to play on, a lot of teams tend to ban it or just ignore it entirely, but Paduk on the Torbjorn is just something that I'm going to keep coming back to possibly for like a week or two now. <laughs> <laughs> well, fingers crossed we get to see more of it as we go into the next map, or as we go into the next map ban phase, I should add. We are going to be waiting on the teams to be picking their next map. Memory serves, Title will have the opportunity to ban with SK Esports then picking a map, as long as it's not an assault map. Release me. Yeah, so the fun stuff here we're going to be looking at is a ban, of course, and a pick, which cannot be an assault map, though SK Esports, I have a feeling, are not going to be looking forward to playing an assault map. Now, the other bonus round here for SK Esports is no matter what map they pick, unless they pick a control point map, TE Lullaby gets to pick their side. And if I'm TE Lullaby, and I'm, you know, TE Lullaby, and I'm Paduk, maybe, <laughs> uh, if a control point map comes out, or rather, if anything other than a control point map comes out, uh, you pick defense, right? Like, you got to. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to think that that defense kind of puts you in a good spot, um, especially if you're going to be uh, for for lullaby. That is, I'll say, <laughs> if you're going to be leaning on that torb just a little bit, I think it's it's a good call. It, if you're able to get a really strong hold, it kind of takes the stress off. Um, at this point, I'm sure Paduk's team, you know, fully backs up that torb. But you know, in cases where you know that kind of comes into question, having that full hold really kind of relieves the pressure a little bit if you're able to get it. Uh, you can say that again, and yes. Esport actually, so Lullaby's 
banning Numbani. You figure that would be a good shot, uh, shot for them, but I think maybe they're thinking that the Fara play isn't going to be in their favor. And yep, there it is. SK Esports, they're going to be picking up Oasis. We're going to be heading to that lovely... Uh, set of control point maps that have quite the variety of uh, fun compositions that work for them. Uh, hilariously, though, one of them, I don't know, maybe Padukle will make it happen again. I, I'm excited. <laughs> I have uh, kind of all the faith in the world that uh, Paduk can. And, well, it's the entirety of team, right? Because it's not just Paduk on this tour. We've seen some, some good May play come out of it. We've seen some really good sniper play, I think. I've, I've liked seeing that. The Baptiste as well. That's not necessarily one of those heroes that we see too much outside of the bunker comp. And it's yep. kind of a unique thing to this composition because they're not just staying positioned in one spot. They're using their Orisa and Hog. They're positioning them where they need to. And then the Baptiste kind of is just Johnny on the spot whenever you need an Immort field. Uh, he's, he's reactive to it as opposed to just, you know, on an egg timer. Yep. And that's just really how it's got to be, especially depending on the round of Oasis you go on to. If you end up in the university, in the library, that's a map that has changed rapidly in the past few months from a Reinhardt-dominated map to an Arisa Hog slugfest. And depending on, like, it, just, it can just be a really super interesting situation. The... Yeah, we are gonna start there! Awesome! I freaking love it. Uh, this is a weird map where you actually also see some Fara play sometimes, uh, as we see Sezuin. Sezuin, I should say. Sorry. Keep this for nothing. That's such a gaff. Uh, dip into the Fara just a little bit there. So, uh, for this particular matchup, I, I'm not sure that the, this particular control point map is gonna necessarily go directly into SK Esports' favor, despite how dominant they were looking on Lijiang Tower. Yeah, absolutely. May be the case. It's it's going to be tough to say. And I I, I want to make a point because because I I like talking about this kind of stuff. We talk about how this is a Ori Hog kind of map, and those are perhaps some of the most uh, controlliest tanks when it comes to positioning your opponent. And this map, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, has a giant hole in the middle. And that hole, if you even just dunk an enemy unit that can't get out too easily in that hole, it brings them out of the fight for, I'd say cons I'd say conservatively, five seconds, which is more than enough, especially if it's a main tank or something that, you know, poses a big threat to a large area. Uh, it poses kind of that uh, man advantage without even having to really get the kill. Yeah, it's fantastic. A single cooldown can remove a combatant from the field, making it a 6v5 almost instantaneously. And it looks like both teams are going to be thinking about that, bringing Aresis to the field. Karn, however, still going to be sticking out on that Roadhog, meaning TE Lullaby is going to be Rock of this Foggy Bear amp field combo. There it is! The halts go out. They almost catch Hero. He pops on that Good Times Aresa anchoring. And whoa, though! SK Esports popping off with some damage. There's that Farah that you sometimes see. Yeah, Kala doing some great cleanup work. We can see that the damage is from that Farah in entirety because the ult charge just wasn't there, at least not until they landed those few rockets. But Manchu actually doing a lot of the heavy lifting with that May. Definitely want to show some respect to those little bit less flashy DPS players. Oh yeah, absolutely. Speaking of which, uh, if you're seeing a DPS that he's super liked, don't forget to vote for them in the Twitch MVP poll below. Also, grab us a follow and a subscribe if you're super happy, because this is just some crazy Overwatch content that we're bringing here, and I almost can't contain myself, except for the fact that I have to, because Kala looks like they're getting a lot closer to that ultimate. Sezyun actually is going to switch over to the Hanzo. Paduk finally drops the Torbjorn. They have moved on to a trans providing Zenyatta and almost get obliterated. Yeah, that would have been a rough start into your full rate <laughs> of the night in Ooh. support. But that opening might be big for love. Oh, wow. Red Sludge can't get their shield back up in time. Been there, done that. Sezyun grabs them. A hero also finds Lum. The barrage gets shut down immediately by Love, who is flexing onto that uh, Ash hitscan, and it's working out fantastically for them. Uh, East, you know, SK Esports took the point pretty early on. Lullaby, now that Paduk is off of the Torbjorn, providing some sick Discord action looking pretty good. Yeah, and, you know... I was talking about the the capability of a spam sniper earlier, and I think that if you're going to run snipers, these two are the spammiest. Hanzo in the literal sense, Ash in the sense that she can just, you know, as I was saying, just immediately down people with a couple of shots and dynamite, or that dynamite particular, so strong. 
Oh, no, it's Lucio. Lucio. Zenyatta goes down as well. It almost doesn't even matter what name I say, right? Because uh, love's <laughs> making it happen. They're sharing the love, so to speak. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had to. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll dock you some caster points for that one, Creep, but a little bit later, because right back into this. We do have Bob online for love. Might use that as a little bit of a stalling tool, but there's significantly more ults going to be online immediately for SK Esports, but in the end, they're probably going to equalize to be slightly in the favor of Lullaby. Yeah, so this is going to be a rough situation. Bob is now on the field. Dragons is in and almost catches Hero. Trance has to be thrown up. Karn goes down quickly in the fight thanks to the combined damage boosting from a lot of people. But Sezion finds Class Nation and that's going to be not good times for them. Red Sledge also goes down. No main tank eagles, no sandwiches. We've been over this. And Sezion, <laughs> though, does get found by Machu. Class Nation is just trades back and forth and that favors the holder of the point. Yeah, absolutely. And Hero looking like their namesake in that... They had, they were basically frozen at the front with their shield. Their shield held fast until, you know, the very back end of the blizzard. It gets cracked and destroyed. Hero gets brought dangerously low. I'm talking like the 40 HP range here, but still manages to maintain themselves. They manage to keep up and hold this point down. And that is some steadfast, like, nerves you need coming through from your Orisa. Yeah, speaking of which, this is some kind of crazy action. Uh, T Lullaby doing an incredible job. Oh, Love looks like Love found a little bit of that backline action as the kills, again, just keep pouring in. Whoa, another kill from Love finds Madshu. The team is just doing fantastic work here. SK Esports, a little back on their heels here as we go into the second round of, uh, of uh, Oasis. Yeah, T E Lullaby going to be taking it. And man, that was... That was a lot. There was a lot to take in there. There was just a so many things to really kind of consider. So many interactions, a lot of action. We saw so many heroes use so many different kind of capabilities. And I, I didn't even realize it until now, but we actually did see the swap buff of Farah um, after that headshot went in from Love onto, I believe it was Kala. Uh, that just seemed to destroy the... Uh, ambitions of the uh, Rocket Queen. Yeah, uh, speaking of the Rocket Queen, Kala you know, jumping onto the Hanzo, doing some seriously solid work here. Says you though, also on the Hanzo, really good. I am genuinely impressed at Paduk's flexibility here as well. The trans seemed to have been up almost exactly when they needed it at every point in time. So, you know, I I don't know. I think if uh, I think if SKE Sports wants to take this back out from under. Uh, first of all, we're going to have to see what map comes up. Uh, second of all, I think they're going to have to get away from a lullaby unsettling them a bit. And this, I think, is just the map to do it. Now, if we're talking about Farah, this is a solid round to play it. And I think if Kala wants to go on to that, this is going to be the map to do it. Yeah, it, it very well might be. Uh, I... Uh, mm. No, I was going to say I would expect Torb to be a little bit more viable here, but looking back at it, no, probably not. Um, I would I would probably save that for the gazebo style uh, sub map if we end up going there. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just going to be the solo healer coming out from the side of, excuse me, TE Lullaby with the pharmacy, as mentioned, on the side of SK Esports. Ooh, Machu's gonna be rocking out some far action. Maybe they had a little bit of heart to heart in there. The Concussion Blast moves the members of Lullaby a little bit out of position as the rockets continue to rain down just over that Arisa shield, forcing the Baptiste invincibility field, invulnerability matrix that is, to bring it out. The halt goes up, it grabs no one from the hook, and Paduk back on the Torbjorn opens it with Kala. Red Sledge finds shortly after Lullaby's gonna be taking this point as the tanks of SK Esports fall. Yeah, and Paduk, I want you to remember what we talked about. I'm glad you're getting glad. I'm glad we're making progress, but it doesn't mean a thing if you don't use that swing. I need the hammer coming to a... <laughs> let's, let's talk about that one more time, because the swing is real, and it looks like Love is bringing it now again with that hit scan excellence, throwing out the McCree almost at the dead eye, but it's Ooh. definitely not coming out on this fight. Yeah, the, there's there's not much to be done except just accept your fate when you get hooked by a hog like that, especially with a character who doesn't have the slimmest hitbox like McCree. Mm -hmm. But they are going to be holding on to the point. Lum is actually going to die i don't yeah. i don't know what just happened there they just abandoned entirely i mean uh, sk esports is definitely going to take the point but that was a little weird yeah it was a little bit peculiar not quite sure what happened there love going to be switching oh, we're going to be seeing a lot of dps swaps we're going to be seeing says and uh, says yoon and love 
hopping onto the snipers. Paduk going to be switching off the Torb. Guessing that the swing was not in full effect, but looking like a little bit more uh, technical issues from the sides of SK Esports. We will give them their dues and allow them a little moment to figure that out. But really, th those swaps were expensive for the side of SK. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, TE Esports, uh, TTE Lullaby. <laughs> uh, TTE Lullaby looking pretty decent here. Um, but... Uh, Karn's the only one here with an ult charge, and Foggy Bear, since they're not going to be rocking the Baptiste, uh, Karn's going to be just kind of on your on his own, rather, for the Hog ult to go in. Uh, yeah, SK Esports looking pretty dominant from the ult standpoint, and it's going to be difficult to unseat them, especially with Kala doing so freaking fantastically on this Widowmaker, actually forcing Love to switch off the McCree. Yeah, and, you know, normally it wouldn't be that big of a problem, but there's... You know, Kala can reposition in a number of different ways, and Madshu having to kind of uh, be in the, well, not having to be, but being in the air really kind of distracts Love's attention. Love can either focus on Kala or they can focus on taking down that Farah. They likely can't do both, though, not at least without some severe support from their ground, uh, from their other ground players, and... It's going to be a real tough spot if Love has to juggle both of those DPS players, plus mind the flying logs from Luke. Yeah, that's not a good, That's it's not an enviable situation. It's winnable. Of course it is. Uh, also, you know, it's, it's just who can say. We've already seen SK Esports take one of these control point maps away from Lullaby in a pretty dominant fashion. But if Lullaby can't take this one out, then we're going to be going to the third. And we're by extension, we're going to be going to a particular section of Oasis that can be a little tricky. Yeah, absolutely. Me and three, both spacing on the name of that particular section. However, I always call it, I don't know if it's an actual gazebo in the middle, but might like as well be. Yeah. <laughs> it might as uh, well be. But I, I, I don't know. I, I'd like to see um, kind of if we see any more medium range hit scans. So, I mean, we saw love on the McCree a little bit, but I'd like to see if we see that come out, maybe some soldier. Because uh, cause that's where, you know, that mid range high ground hit scan can feel a little bit more comfortable. He gets yep. a little claustrophobic if you're trying to snipe down from that perch, um, but something like a Tracer Reaper just won't cut the mustard when it comes to the range. Yeah, especially like you're thinking, like we've heard a lot in the last many days of how Reaper can, you know, be used to apply pressure, yada, yada, yada. But ultimately, I think at this particular level, that's not going to be the hero that makes it happen. But if they do bring it out and the other team isn't expecting it, we're looking at you, Paduk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that could be maybe a solid situation. So the point has flipped and not a lot of progress has been made by Lullaby, but we know, you know, Paduk, now they're back on the Zenyatta. So... Yeah, this this might be the situation where Lullaby starts take quote unquote. I don't I don't want to say taking it seriously because we've seen some incredible action from Paduk, mm -hmm. but uh, in this particular lineup right now, looking at what heroes they have and what they're going up against, I definitely would prefer the Transcendence. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, with the exception of Luke, there's not a whole lot to have to use the Transcendence against, other than just you know if everybody on your team's getting low. Because, you know, that far rocket barrage, if it catches somebody out, there's a high chance it's going to kill them anyway. Uh, Kala has that one-shot potential as well right out of the gate. Zenyatta can't really transcendence through that. Body shot, sure. But, you know, Kala seems a crack enough shot to, to hit heads fairly uh, consistently. Uh, so, really, you're, you're keeping that to just kind of uh, handle Luke as well as, you know, the damage amplification. Because, you know love having a discord orb on a body shot target can make all the difference in some cleanup values yeah that's the situation where in these particular matchups that your teamwork and coordination is going to come into the play you get into that particular option of all right look there's a discord orb on them you know there might be a far in the sky but maybe you know love just keeps them occupied long enough for the action on the ground to take its toll on that poor, poor Discord target. There's no Ana to keep them up with heals and the nades. There's no Zarya to get that orb away from them. It's just, it's not possible. So it's you're almost at the mercy of the Discord. Now, getting it behind the shield is one thing, but breaking through that shield is another. You do have to get through that tank, which, as we know, in form of hero can be pretty difficult, but with the pulled pork, that's a whole different story. Yeah, so, I mean, there's kind of a bunch of ways to navigate. Even if you just look at the Roadhog and Orisa, there's a bunch of different ways to navigate this. So you can either use the Orisa pole to just yoink somebody up 
and put the Discord orb, orb on them. That's not that tough. But Roadhog has a range where if you right click, it does some severe shield break. It can, it can be a very good shield break tank if you know how to utilize him at that perfect range. Mm -hmm. You add in some Hanzo spam arrows, a little bit of Zen left clicks. That shield is done in no time, leading you free to just discord whomst of ever you need <laughs> to just get the damage through to. Yeah, the, the hog is pretty... Uh discriminate in his targeting and he shows no mercy to those he finds and it it can be kind of a spooky situation if you're on the you know receiving end of that especially when there's no diva around to i guess throw their slightly nerfed but still pretty useful defense matrix into the fray you also have no zarya to stop that hook damage from coming through and also getting some serious boost now we are going to be coming back from this red sledge is back their ult charge is gone so that is going to put a bit of a damper on the defense here but with a barrage sights and a valkyrie coming online along with a class nation class act hog ult, that's that's pretty much a recipe for at least one hold yeah i think they're still going to be preferring their ult position over their opponents right now um, but that being said, Red Sledge is not going to be emptying this position if we're getting brought dangerously. Oh, cleaned up. <laughs> the clean from love was there, and it looks like, oh, very close. And a sneaky, sneaky flank from Luke is going to remove love from the field. Also, Fogey Bear. So it's almost a point take from Lullaby, but there's a bit of a stall. There's the end of the stall. Well done from Lullaby there. That wasn't the take that you would have expected to come through, but... You know, there was a bit of the percentage overtake from SK Esports, so this is very much so anyone's game. Yeah, see, Lullaby just now going to be pulling ahead. Charge. So you can see now that they're set for that grab grab combo. Not quite, set, not quite landing though. Not for lack of trying though. Yeah, the dragons goes right into the middle. Love finds Kala in the Widow duel. That is going to be resible, of course. And now the sight's going out from Kala, meaning that Red's uh, hero better, rather, better keep that shield up or someone's going to find them, aka one of the snipers. Luke does find love, they get rezzed, but Class Nation beats up Karn with their ult up and ready to go, which means uh, Class Nation is going to be the one to get that throw with that ultimate out there. Love wins, beats Kala in the duel yet again, says Yoon goes down, Paduk does find Class Nation, and despite the kills coming out, Madshu actually switching onto a Sombra to try and even this up a little, it's still going to be a point hold for Lullaby. Yeah, that was a rather impressive hold. They didn't fight, but now the Sombra, I like this. It's, oh, the Sombra getting caught out early is a little yeah. bit expensive. And there are so many characters on the side of SK Esports that have just really strongly defended against by this hog. <laughs> As we can see, Red Sled's getting taken down by that pulse. Yeah, the stall comp that comes in here, you know, sometimes you have to just get whatever can get you onto the point fast enough, but if it's, it's this particular composition that's going to be coming out, that means it's going to put them at very susceptible to ultimates like Karn, or Karn, rather. There's no, there is a defense matrix, but it wasn't in the right position, there's no shield, and that's going to be the end of Oasis with T Lullaby taking it. They're pushing into the lead. It's now match point. Yeah, TE Lullaby in the winner's seat. They need to just claim one more map and they will have it. But before we can do that, we do, of course, have to decide what that map will be, which means we're going to the ban and select phase. And who is more excited about that than us? It is such an exciting moment. Is Again, so this has been the breaking of the cycle, though. TE Lullaby did not get to pick this map. They won it anyways. They have, quote unquote, taken the possession arrow flip and ran with it so now sk esports a little bit back on the heels they're gonna have to find a map that they can really rock with here that really you know they're really comfortable with because this is it this is their life in the tournament yeah absolutely and you know best case for sk esports they have to go two games with picks that are not favorable to them worst case they have to go two and a half three games uh, assuming that one of them ends in a tie and that's that's a lot of that's that can be a lot of pressure especially uh when you know that you're not going to be getting the last map pick if you do win the fourth map here tonight yeah and then that'll take us to the five and then it's all it's almost as much of a match of endurance than it is anything else that yeah. being said though uh i think lullaby right now they're probably riding a bit of a high i think uh they're gonna be do feeling pretty good, right? And with their map am coming in here, it's going to be up to esports entirely, SK esports that is, to really 
I don't know. They have to seize the initiative here. So Karn's uh, TE Lullaby is going to ban Dorado. Uh, that could be the signal, you know, for SKE Sports to pick Junkertown. Or maybe it might not be. It's difficult to say who's playing the mind games. But that being said, this is still SK Esports 2 without Dorado or a control map. Take the initiative. And that is massively what needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, it certainly seems to be. It's it's tough to predict what SKE is going to come out here with. Uh, of course, we cannot see Ilios come out. But we still can't see Hanamura. We can see... Uh, Junker Town, we can see Eichenfeld, and we can see Hollywood. And it looks like the ladder is going to be our choice here tonight. We're going to be seeing Hollywood come up. And I don't know. I think that uh, this might be an opportunity to see some more Torp on first point. Yeah. Of all the maps that you could have picked to uh, not see a Torbjorn, Hollywood <laughs> is the exact opposite. Uh, I think it's pretty... Much a guarantee at this point now that Paduk's going to be coming out with it. But would not would that be not a power play for the ages for them to come out <laughs> with anything other than Torbjorn? But they're even electing to start on defense. I'm pretty sure we all know what we're going to be seeing. Uh, that being said, by the way, again, I keep having to hammer this in. If you're liking what you're seeing, make sure you let the players know via your vote in the Twitch picks below the stream because MVP is the real deal. Yeah, absolutely. As well, these matches brought to viewers like you, so make sure like what you so hit that follow button join us in the discord join us on twitter whatever your preferred social media uh, endorsement form is make sure you do it support us so we can keep bringing you guys these fantastic tournaments we love doing it don't don't we don't we love doing it three uh -huh. and definitely no one is forcing me to say that release me uh so <laughs> that being said uh Yes, so <laughs> T.E. Lullaby to the shock of literally everyone in the chat and uh, us in the desk here right now has elected to start on defense, which is a really solid play. I don't know what the stats are these days given the new meta shakeup, but that used to be the pick where you could win the majority of your matches starting out on defense. As far as T.E. Lullaby have been going, uh, their pushes and their holds have been equally as impressive, so uh, I guess that's the safest choice. Yeah, I mean, it's it's probably six of one, half a dozen of the, to the team. But for the start, I am excited to see what we're going to be uh, heading out with for title. And it's looking like not the Torb. Not the Torb yep. quite yet. I love the power play. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know SK Esports is anticipating it. They have to be. But, but. They're not going to see it. Instead, it's going to be a transcendence. And it's going to be double snipers, which, you know, uh, it's been such a long time since we saw this on Hollywood. And not with this particular tank lineup. Nay, instead, we're still going to be sticking with the pulled pork. And that's actually going to be on both sides with Manchu back on the Farah, but Kala on the Sombra. Fascinating. Yeah. I, okay. So Kala on the Sombra is bad news for Paduk. Love on the Widow is bad news for Manchu. And the Roadhogs are bad news for anybody who gets caught out of position <laughs> there's there's a lot of interactions going on here but really i think it's if kala can kill paduk first or if luke can kill madshu first because there is no mercy to bring up madshu yeah now love still on the Widowmaker again and says on the uh hanzo that's gonna be a tricky little play and ooh, wow that is gonna be forcing out the picks yes they possibly were anticipating the torbjorn they've shaken up their composition as a result it's back on double snipers for both of them yeah, I mean, it, it definitely makes sense. I I think that you'd still be in a decent spot running with that Sombra if you can't ha if you hack the hog, it kind of really pulls the teeth of the cop. <laughs> <laughs> but love gonna be pulling some teeth of their own. A ferocious play, and Red Sledge gets taken down so freaking low. It is only a matter of time until Sezion's arrows find them. Ah, uh, that's so. That's a minute now, or rather, that's a bunch of time, and we're down to three minutes left for the pushes. And it's a Torbjornless hold from from <laughs> Lullaby here. And so far working out pretty well, but Paduk suspiciously low on that uh, Transcendence progress. Yeah, and I mean, part of that's just because there has not been a lot of healing from TE Lullaby. Love has been ending fights before they even get started, as well Karn has. Uh, but these fights just, just not been encouraging Lullaby to take too much damage. 
Now that was one of the spookiest things I ever did see. Love after you know while they you know finished their murder spree here, mm -hmm. uh, almost got sideswiped by Kala there, and that I think that may have been a kill to open it for the ages. Instead though, it's going to be a traditional dive coming out now from SK Esports, who bring out the Winston and the Diva, and this might be a recipe for good times, especially now that Kala is on that tracer. Yeah, now we're going to be seeing the team switch over to a little bit of a dive. We're going to be seeing SK bit of a dive. Kala has been one of the few players we've seen on Tracer this time around. I I want to see it working, but I think as of yet, we have yet to see it proven to great efficiency. Yeah, it's been best when they have an opportunity <laughs> to get at Love uh, on their own terms, but Love is going to grab Red Sledge before this push can really even take off. Kala does find their way into the back line. They're oh, so close to be forcing down a kill, but instead that's just going to force out the bongos. Lum actually grabs Love, uh, and okay, so now Kala finishes off Karn. This is going to be start of something that might be kind of big for SK Esports if the defense was not still holding them from a tick. Yeah, defense still looking pretty good. I mean, the kills seem like they're chaotic enough for the dive to kind of be paying off a little bit here, but it's just not the case. The defense looking pretty good. They're going to be taking down their opponent too. But, I mean, even more importantly, look at the ult charge that's being built up. We're seeing the transcendence come out, which, you know, heads up to Paduk. They're going to have to keep a little bit separated from their team if they don't want to get caught out by Madshu that much. But, you know, the dragons are going to be ready to uh, go online as well. They're going to have Infrasites to prepare for this next push. And it's already 60 seconds, as we just heard the kind lady say on the announcements. Yeah, Madshu built up that Sombra ult exactly as quickly as they needed to. And with the time left to make this happen, Karn's early ult here could be just what the doctor ordered. Get your ults out before that Sombra ult makes them completely irrelevant. And looking at where Madshu's setting up, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a little bit of a tricky one. They are coming in here. Uh, looks like they're all trapped here, up here, and they're going to be forced. Uh, they have to make a choice. It's either take them in the cafe or take the long way around. And it looks like going to be taking them on in the cafe. The EMP, the dragons get eaten by Class oh, Nation. No. That's huge. Yeah, that is pretty big. We are going to be seeing Madshu not quite break out such a big EMP, but still looking like things might just be going in favor of the side of SK Esports, and that's really what they needed. Yep, that was clutch. Um, so, yeah, that's it. The take comes in uh, just as overtime is going to be clicking in here. And, yeah, TE Lullaby have uh, a Streets phase hold to have some fun with. And Sezion had actually dropped onto the Tracer here. Love is going to be sticking onto... Wait, this is still a hold! What's going on here? Okay, here we go. This, it's just a stall. It's just a stall. Yeah, it's just a little bit of some stall action looking like... Not quite wanting to give up that point too easily. They can't let it go just like that. We're going to be seeing Kala almost having that pulse mine. That is a good opening here. Uh, it might be tough to dislodge this Widow played by Love, though. Yeah, it's an interesting composition that they're coming out here with. Uh, Love is definitely going to get forced down. This uh, Hammond coming out with the Winston is super exciting. Yeah, normally you see a D.Va Winston dive, at least, you know, a few metas ago you would have. But now I like the Wrecking Ball uh, Winston kind of dive that comes in instead. Uh, D.Va kind of fallen out of Vogue. And some quick reactions from Red Sledge to drop that bubble in time. Yeah, that was nuts. Really solid reaction time. Love is going to find Kala. I have a feeling they might be switching on to a sniper of their own because this is a map. Sezion popping off on the Torbjorn. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, that's Paduk's hero. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, we are still seeing the Torb come out in full effect. It doesn't look like Sezion's playing as aggressive a Torb. Um, but, you know, that's that's not necessarily the worst thing. As I said before on previous casts, I believe, Torb can be so good at preventing a dive, which is kind of the exact comp that's being run here by the side of SK Esports. Yep, and there it not is. Kala is going to be sticking onto this Tracer as the Winston goes leaping into the back line with Class Nation on the Hammond backup. Mine's going out way over the field. The EMP follows, grabs three. The anti nade finds Paduk. This is a very good push now coming in from SK Esports, despite a few incidental murders uh, back from Lullaby. Yeah, but what is life without a few murders? Lo dangerously low. Not going to be likely to claim back this point as we are going to be seeing the offense get a little bit of progress on it. And speaking of the offense, they are going to be having, you know, a little bit of an ult advantage here. They have that primal, they have that beat. 
Not much else though, as we see Paduk having that transcendence with the rest of the team kind of working their way up as well. We're gonna be hearing a pause come through from the teams. Yep, Manchu goes for the pause. They're playing that Sombra. Hopefully it's not a disconnect coming out from them, though they wouldn't stand to lose a lot of ult charge, but they would definitely be gone from this particular fight. Um, so, however, uh, looking at the way things stand, Sezun is getting close to the nacho cheese, the point is getting, the payload rather, is getting close to point B, and Paduk has the transcendence ready to go. Yeah, so, I mean, it's interesting, right? I'm, I'm curious to see if Sezun is going to be saving that Molten Core until they get to the third point, or if they're going to use it right out of the gate. As soon as it's available, not going to be finding out this push that says you and dies anyway. <laughs> yeah, there's something to be said for that ultra uh, fighty, punchy dive. Uh, but Paduk is finding quite a few kills here. And holy moly, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This dive got completely turned around. The, the damage coming out from Lullaby is massive. If they can hold this point here, it's huge. Karn even tosses out the ultimate 1.58 meters away. That's it. They managed to pull it out in the last second. Wow, and Class Nation, gotta be feeling sour about that right as I believe they either got or killed, meaning the mines weren't gonna come out, they weren't gonna make it chief. And 117 and 50, that's supremely close. That is, that is some severe hold coming out from Tidal. Yeah, that's massive, so... Oof, uh, if functionally, it's a, a point B take you pretty much have to get the payload almost exactly to point B. It's yeah. not a map completion, but as far as distance goes, that's pretty much the long and short of it. Now, with regards to the offense that TE Lullaby is going to have to pull out here, I'm still not envious. SK Esports seems to have found a little bit of the fight in their fire, the fire in their fight, so to speak. And <laughs> it's going to be a pretty fun time seeing what their defense comes up with. We have yet to see a Bastion tonight, despite the number of matches. Ooh, oh. ooh did I say the magic words? Maybe, maybe Mad Shu has the opportunity to be the one to deliver. Is that a look? See what they're going to SK Esports. Leaning towards that uh, yes. very aggressive bunker style, classic yeah. bunker style with the Baptiste. Sombra though, a little bit, a uh, little bit peculiar, a little, yeah. little bit unseen. The Arisa Diva we see a lot. Arisa holds up there at the cafe. Diva is your uh, designated contester on the payload while Bastion does their duty. Uh, Luke on the Baptiste, obvious. Uh, the amp field is pretty solid with combo with Bastion. Uh, pretty. Uh, well, I almost said this was a standard composition for Lullaby, <laughs> and it pretty much is. It's a Hanzo, it's a Torbjorn, it's good times. Kala there getting the very early uh, scouting there on this composition, so the entirety of it is known to them. Fogey Bear coming out on that Baptiste last. I think he's going to be the target of a bit of a hack here, and that is almost going to be the case. Ooh, Ooh. That's, that's not a, good. Yeah, that's a good opening for the side of Lullaby, and now we're seeing... And the swap out, we're not going to be seeing um, Sezun on anything but the May to start. It's kind of a, a unique choice, I'd say. And right now we might just be seeing Foggy Bear trying to build up some healing to get that damage amp up as soon as possible. Yeah, the Bastion is really difficult to come into here, but the pulled port is one way to make it happen, as well as a Batiste, which ignores all the damage coming through. Now, Madshu is making it impossible for Buntik, but wow, they even get the Amp Matrix up so quickly. The Maywall's making it difficult to get in there. Luke does lose the Info Field, and Red Sledge goes down. That's massive. That and oh, Madshu no. goes too. Oof. Yeah, that Oof. was expensive. Madshu uses that tank to figure to no effect, and now is just going to be trying to post any leverage they can. Uh, Dragons goes out. That's not going to get anyone so far. Says he does finish off Madzu, but it's kill after kill in the field, and the EMP goes on to almost every surviving member of Lullaby. It's going to be a... Well, it's not going to be a wipe. There's still members on the field, and it's a Roadhog in a May. Mom! 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 The kill feed claiming three lives. That Mercy Valk. Usually we don't see Mercy Valks used that way, but Lum claiming to fame, trying to be that MVP. Good grief, I think they're putting their name out there. Yeah, that was pretty freaking bonkers. You can vote for Lum or whoever your favorite player is, by the way, down in the Twitch picks below the stream. Also, throw a follow and a subscribe as we just get this crazy action rolling, and there's going to be more to come in the further maps. Now, it looks like they're switching up to the... F 
Was that a fire? No, that was just uh, healing nades. It's difficult to sell sometimes. Explosions, whether they're beneficial <laughs> or otherwise. But Kala's going into the backline again, probably to get off that sick hack. D.Va gets pulled in again. Gonna be dropping a big fat D.Va bomb right onto the field. It's all! Oh, oh it's no! Actually just a 2K, but it kills a lot, uh, especially the invincibility field. Which I always thought was kind of weird, you know? Yeah, and that is... That is unfortunate. That's gotta be a, a pretty bad feel for the side. Bye. Because, uh, you know, they used a handful of ults and didn't really get anything. And then Karn just gets shredded up in the backfield. That's got to feel even worse. Yeah, that's it's just absolutely crazy. So the Paduk ult did come out. I lost the Paduk ult. The Torbjorn ult came out. Kala finds Fogey mm -hmm. Bear. That's going to be a bit of a stagger. It's a minute 15, roughly a bit more than that left. They've got some ults. That is to say S uh, TE Lullaby. But SK Esports also has a bit of a bank themselves. I think we're approaching one push territory here. Yeah, it's certainly going to be that way. We are getting to final minute, which means that only two or three more good pushes if these teams are expeditious. They do have a few ults to work with. Uh oh, Reap. We're seeing a Reaper on the field right now. <laughs> uh, what was it we said about Reaper? Provides a lot of pressure. Uh, I think Kala, however, uh, might be able to. Uh oh. Yeah, Fogey Bear almost finds it, but Machu is just going to eliminate this before it even happens. P Paduk goes down. The switch onto the Zenyatta was way too late. Love actually does grab Class Nation. Holy moly, wait a minute, what's going on here? Hero grabs Machu, but Luke does fight Hero, so it's kind of crazy, but the tick is there. It's just Luke on the field. The drums is, uh, Red Sledge is still alive. That's massive. And Luke, until they go down, that's massive healing for every team member. But the ticks are here. Lum, Lum gets discorded. They escape, but Paduk snipes them right out of the air Ooh. yeah there is there is no rest for the side of <laughs> k right now they are trying to get on a point wow. just to make it last but alas they will not two and a half minutes for te lullaby to carry it about 115 meters uh love just built to a reaper all in that fight just gonna throw that out there <laughs> yeah it's i mean truly some impressive uh leverage of that re about it earlier and you know what? It just goes to show. And they've got the um, high ground. Ooh, Lum pokes up. They find Love sneaking. Uh, I think we, anyone with a, you know, with a ult tracking complex has this. Ah, uh, they're not even gonna have to use the Reaper ult here. The kill goes on to Red Sledge. The D-Mech on the Class Nation. The pick comes, a uh, Rez rather, comes back from Red uh, Lum. But there it is. There's the Reaper ult. That's gonna wrap this fight up. Lickety split. Gets the two kills. There's no way Lum's gonna pull a Rez out of that with it on cooldown. A T, almost a team kill. Uh, Kala's gonna stay alive. They're gonna have that, uh... uh Love is just pulling out this Reaper play like it's nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's curious. I'm curious to know if that's what they maybe trained a little bit for, or if it's just something that they, uh, they thought might be a little bit of a, uh, a wild card pick. Uh, so far, I, I I could not tell, which I guess is the best compliment. <laughs> but that's one of the big weaknesses of Reaper is if you can catch them with their uh, cooldowns down, they are going to get utterly murdered. Class Nation throws the bomb out. They get murdered before it lands. The Send Yada ult is finally here, and the May ult comes in big. Lump goes out with the dragons, gets thrown right onto the cart. And the EMP follows it, but there's just too many deaths. That's going to be T Lullaby pushing the cart through. Yeah, that's going to be title taking it. Wow, that was, uh, it, it took a little while on first, but they finally got it. They managed to push through and <sighs> some solid plays coming through from TE Lullaby. Solid plays coming through from both sides here tonight. Yeah, that was some really excellent Overwatch from both sides. Literally like nail biting stuff. SK Esports and TE Lullaby is one of my new favorite matchups. That it's not just because Paduk was rocking the Toblerone. It's there was just so much solid Overwatch play from both sides, and I'm just just happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Looking, speaking of people who are happy to be here, it looks like we have somebody already volunteering to get into the interview booth. We're gonna be waiting for confirmation from our producer to see if they're actually gonna be hopping in with us. But that being said, don't forget while we're in the interview to vote for you guys' favorite MVP player. We've been hyping it all night. We'll let you guys know at the end of the interview who the MVP is. And with that, it looks like Love is going to be joining us. The DPS player from TE Lullaby. Love, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm I'm doing pretty all right. That was some uh some entertainment entertainment to watch you guys uh 
to watch you guys come out of that game. How uh, how are you feeling? I guess we're feeling good. <laughs> right. <laughs> after that, yeah. after they almost uh, fully fully held us on the first point. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood. It was. Yeah, it was a bit of an airbiter, but we managed to pull through. So that was a super spooky moment for you guys, I'm sure. You ended up having to switch onto a Reaper. You built ult in the fight, uh, so it clearly worked out really well for you. Uh, what was behind that? I, and I don't mean to sound like it was a desperation play. Is this something you guys plan? Like, okay, it's the last push, we gotta get something out there. Or is it more of the, you know, okay, we need some of them with big damage that can get on the point really quickly. Reaper's the, Reaper's the pick. Uh, it looks like, according to chat, Love's oh, no! just gave out on us, so it looks like we are having a little bit of communicado issues, so we will be waiting for just a moment to see if Love gets back. Love, I see a little bit of activity. Are you back, my friend? Nope, not quite yet, but I definitely can't wait to hear about some of those plays. I definitely do want to get into the mind of that Reaper pick. 3P hit it right on the head. You asked exactly the first question I was about to fire <laughs> out. I don't blame you at all, sir. It's, it's, a, it's a very good query. I'm 95% sure it's pretty much on everyone's mind at this moment, except for uh, Love and his team. Um, that's kind of that situation where uh, there's a lot of arguments you, you can make um, why Reaper is a bad pick. There's a lot of arguments you can make as to why Reaper is actually still a good pick. Uh, Madshu ripping Love apart when they, you know, were a little bit off cooldown is one of the reasons why Reaper can be a spooky pick. No pun intended. They have a couple good abilities that let them move about the field, or you have a couple good opportunities to take a Reaper out. Their cooldowns are not necessarily enviable. Their abilities are really solid, but when they're away from their team as a flanker, unlike Tracer, there's... They can be run down pretty, a little easier than other characters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely the case. And you know, I'm, I liked seeing the way Title Esports played. They they played a very good game, but I'm a little disappointed. Uh, and and I guess I really shouldn't be, uh, because even though I saw more Tracer now from SK Esports than I have in a very long time, I wanted to see more. You know, I. I, I, it reminds me of the old school dive days, and I know everybody's like, oh, I hate dive or I dislike dive, but dive was, was pretty A plus to me. Like, I, I genuinely yeah. liked the coordination that was required in dive. It wasn't so much just kind of uh, teams doing the obvious thing, if that makes sense. It, it yeah. required a little bit of finesse. 100% agree. Uh, Kala rocking it out on the tracer did really well initially. They were actually, I think they even forced. Um, Love to switch off the Widowmaker at one point. There was the, or maybe it was vice versa. I don't know. Tracer is a really solid option to throw against that back line. Their ability to one click those 200 health heroes is pretty undisputed, and they can also get themselves out of that situation. And when you're looking at a dive, oh goodness, excuse me. When you're looking at a dive situation, uh, the team is going to be pretty focused on the very angry monkey jumping into your front line. So, uh, yeah, like as far as Tracer goes, love it. And Kala, I think, had a really solid option there picking it. I agree, Sir Waltham. I, I think that would have been a really solid option for them to continue with. Unfortunately, they didn't get to see it, and the dive was working really well for them. But in the end, it, it, Ki Lullaby, after that first map, they really just not only turned it around, but then just kind of kind of dominated. Yeah, it really seemed like they did. Uh, and, you know... I'm trying to recall who it was, but we saw a um, a Genji come out, mm -hmm. and I keep thinking about it, and I'm not sure why. I think, uh, well, I, I remember that it did. It, it was kind of operation that on a Nano Blade going, but mm -hmm. it just it it didn't seem like it was a coordinated swap. It seemed like one player understood that the swap was going to go through, the other one didn't. So it, it was kind of a bit curious to see that that delay in interaction between the two. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, I, I believe it was on the side of SK. So they just weren't quite able to make that aspect of the dive work quite as well as they needed to. And you know what? Sometimes that's all right. Sometimes it's perfectly all right. However, unfortunately, it does mean we won't be seeing SK Esports anymore this month. But titled Esports going to be able to move on to uh, the round three of the loser's bracket. Yeah, and... Uh... <sighs> I would have enjoyed seeing more of both of these teams. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty excited to see TE Lullaby uh, continue as well, though. Uh, really looking forward to see what they can come out with. Uh, that being said, 
uh, I think the viewers are pretty uh, solid in their option here. They have elected Karn, the uh, <laughs> viewers MP3, and I just uh, <laughs> it's it's just thinking about it. I, a Roadhog just got MVP. And that's, I, really, that's, I really want to let that sink in for a minute here. <laughs> that's the way it should be, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Love it. Uh, any tank players get MVPs, immediately a friend in my book. But that being said, I mean, you know, I can't really blame. We, we talk about how, you know, the Hog Ori, you know, on ladder, when you're playing Hog just by yourself, especially, you know, people who have been playing this game for a long time, Hog is one of those characters that's so easy to squeeze value out of. You just hit the hook, you pull them in, and you hit the left click. And even if they don't die, you've taken off a huge amount of their health, depending on whatever character's hitbox you're shooting at. Yeah. But it... <laughs> when you add that communication, it it steps it up to a new level. To have to coordinate with an Arisa, um, that's where you really start to kind of transform this game into the team-based Overwatch that we know. And I think Karn demonstrated that perfectly. Yeah, we were talking about how earlier that if you're doing a 3-3, your coordination has to be... Uh, really just super on point and if you're doing the dps then yes you get a little bit of that mechanical skill to override that but the pulled pork actually kind of brings that coordination back into focus we saw that here with both teams ke lullaby is going to be one that comes out on top uh and that yeah that's that's going to be the make or breaker right there yeah absolutely 100 percent so congratulations to karn for getting our nv vote congratulations to title for winning it here in losers bracket round two that means that they will be going up against metamorphic in round three here in a couple days if memory serves tomorrow however we will be having triumph academy go up against phase one as well as redacted going up against citizens at that nine o'clock slot but however i think we are about ready to wrap it up here so on behalf of your casting talent i have been sir waltham you can catch me on Twitch or Twitter at Sir Waltham, W-A-L-T-H-A-M. And I have been ThreePwood007. You can grab me on Twitch or Twitter at ThreePwood007. Don't forget to follow, subscribe if you super love it. But remember, we're going to be here like pretty much a lot of the time. It's 7 p.m. <laughs> and 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time because we're in evil daylight savings time. Uh, but <laughs> always start eSports Live. We're running the Overwatch All-Star Brawl. We're happy to have you. See you again next time. Take care, everybody.